One of my favorite things about books is of course buying new books. So let's talk about all of the fantasy books that I am anticipating in 2023. Hey guys, welcome back. Every six months or so, I like to go over the books that I am really anticipating coming out in the next few months. And so today I'm gonna to be going through the first half of 2023. There are so many wonderful fantasy books hitting shelves and I can't wait to dive in and talk about them. Of course, there are going to be a lot of books on this list. I try to include as many books as I could, but of course I will probably miss some. Um, so the summaries are going to be brief. But of course, if any of these books interest you, please go check out more about it. So I know that this video is coming out in February, but I moved in the beginning of January, so all of my videos have been kind of delayed, but there's still plenty of books to anticipate, so I'm going to be talking through all of my January and February anticipated fantasy releases, as well all the way through June. Before I get into this video, I want to talk about the HarperCollins union strike. So the strike is approaching about 60 business days, I think, and so the rule of thumb is to withhold reviews on any HarperCollins book. So I haven't been posting any reviews for books that are published by HarperCollins or a HarperCollins imprint. So I will leave some resources down below that you can go and check out to support the union workers. And so any book that I mentioned just now, if I were to read it, I would withhold a review until the union and HarperCollins have come to an agreement. And of course, since it's February when I'm filming this, I already have some of my January books. So the first book for January is Song of Silver Flame Like Night by Emily Wen Zhao, who wrote the Blood Air trilogy. And this was a YA pick club for Barnes & Noble, which is why I have the cool alternate color edition. So once upon a time, Lan had a different name, but then her kingdom was conquered and all she's left with is a mark burned into her arm by her mother and only she can see it until she meets a mysterious boy in a tea house. Zen is a practitioner which means he has magic that is drawn from demons and he realizes that Lan is also a fellow practitioner and in her mark is a lot of power and so they journey into the mountains to find other practitioners to help her hone her skills and overthrow the empire. I mean, it just sounds like a classically wonderful magic adventure book and also there's a dragon on the cover and I love dragons. Everyone must know that I've been really excited for this one and it is Mysteries of Thorn Matter by Margaret Rogerson. It's a little novella, cozy story about Elizabeth and Nathaniel and Silas, which is a companion to Sorcery of Thorns, aka literally my favorite book ever. I love this book so much. I really wanted to reread it before I read Mysteries of Thorn Manor. Um, I haven't gotten to it yet because I haven't really been in a super fantasy mood, but um, the day that I get to this will be the best day of my life because I love this book so much. We follow Elizabeth and she is training to be a warden in this great library and basically like books are like alive and she's framed for a crime and so she's like transported to be tried for her crimes and there she meets Nathaniel who's like a warlock who she's basically been trained to like be wary of the whole time. And it's just a beautiful story, so cozy, I love it so much, literally has my heart. And I'm so, so happy Margaret Rogerson decided to write something in this world. Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett, and this premise sounds like really interesting and cool, so we have this like grumpy Cambridge professor and she's basically studying fairies, so she goes to this small remote town to continue her studies and then this like other professor from the school kind of like follows her there and there's like some mystery between them so it's like about like the fairies and she's like discovering that her research may be more real than she thinks and at the same time she's trying to like figure out what's going on with this other guy from the school and they're kind of like developing feelings for each other so it's like Definitely a fantasy romance, kind of cozy vibes, and I'm really intrigued by this premise because it sounds really unique, so we'll be getting to this one soon. The Stolen Air by Holly Black. This is a continuation of her beloved Cruel Prince series, and this follows Oak, who is Jude's younger brother. I don't want to say too much because there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the first Cruel Prince trilogy, but basically it's a few years later. Oak is now older, and he has to work with someone named Sorin. And Sorin basically fled the Court of Teeth and has been like living in the woods, in the mortal world, kind of like feral, and then Oak saves her. So it's their story. I don't know too much about it because I kind of want to be blind going in. Um, I am in the middle of a Cool Prince trilogy reread in preparation for this. Hellbent by Lee Bardugo is the sequel to Ninth House. And Ninth House came out like 
two-ish years ago and we follow Alex Stern who basically has some paranormal abilities and she's asked to go undercover and join a secret society at Yale University and she definitely does not fit like the preppy mold of a Yale University student. She's very like emo and goth and it's her story of like trying to figure out what's going on. It's like very dark and gritty. Love this book so much. I definitely need to give it a reread before I read Hellbent but I just know it's gonna be amazing when I do read it. On Sealy by Ivalice Hoffman. This book follows twin sisters, one who is a professional rogue on the run and the other who is a changeling and trying to figure out where she fits in with the humans and kind of what happened with the fae who made her. Sealy, the changeling, is also autistic and finds it really hard to navigate the human world around her. And then these two twins are caught up in a heist on wrong and they need to unravel a larger mystery. This book sounds really cool and I love this cover. Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare, <laughs> literally gigantic. This is the third and final book in the Last Hours trilogy. I mean, just look at how many books there are in the Shadowhunter world. This is basically the second generation from the Infernal Devices and there, there is so much, there is so much going on and I don't even want to spoil like anything so all I'm just gonna say is more shadow hunters. Moving on to February. First up, we have The Last Hell of the Flower Bride by Roshani Chachki, and I have been so excited for this one. This cover looks stunning, and it's supposed to be like a gothic horror fantasy romance, which really just like checks a lot of boxes for me. So, a man who believed in fairy tales married a mysterious woman named Indigo, and they believed they would live happily ever after, except she asked that he never pry into her past. When Indigo's estranged aunt is dying, they must return to her childhood home, the House of Dreams, and there is the shadow of another girl, Azor, Indigo's dearest childhood friend who mysteriously disappeared. And as the house slowly reveals Indigo's secrets, the bridegroom must choose between reality and fantasy. It just sounds so cool and like lush and like, I don't know, it just seems perfectly atmospheric and I just already know I'm going to love it. Also, another very exciting release. I really have been trying to dig my teeth more into fantasy this year. I have kind of strayed a little bit away from my goal, which I'll talk about more in my January wrap-up. Um, but yeah, so many exciting fantasy books coming out this year, including the prequel to Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I feel like this book, like, its size really, like, shook the book community when it came out, and, like, I loved this. It was such, like, a beautiful fantasy. Hold on, I have some, like, little doodles that I have in here. Little stars. Look, I drew a little orange blossom. Um, this is just a beautiful sapphic high fantasy with dragons and I don't know, I feel like I need to experience a reread and this prequel would be the perfect opportunity to do so. But this prequel is called Day of Fallen Night and the series is gonna be called The Roots of Chaos, which is cool. So it says Roots of Chaos number zero on Goodreads, so I wonder if that means we're gonna get more after Priory. So this basically is back in the world and we're following each of the different territories and it's really just like talking about what shaped the world to be what it is in Priority of the Orange Tree because there's just like this sweeping lore and a lot of things that have happened in the generations past that really set the scene in the book and so I think it's gonna be cool to go back and like explore all of that and I'm very excited. I love Samantha Shannon's writing. I definitely also want to pick uh, pick up her Bone Season series at some point because I think she's a great writer. Next we have Stardust in Their Veins by Laura Sebastian and okay I loved the cover for the first one. I thought it was so well done and then they changed it and then they changed the sequel, I don't like it, but the UK one is still the one that I like, so I'm gonna have to start buying the UK books for the series because I really don't agree with their cover change decision for the US publisher. I don't I don't understand why you take such beautiful art and put it in a like a star that big. Like Anyways, the first book in the series is called Castles in Their Bones, and it's about triplets, and they've been raised by their mother. Uh, the queen, so their princesses, to kind of each hone a specific skill and then they are sent out to be like brides to different kingdoms but with their training for their mother's like ultimate takeover. So yeah, I think I'll be picking up the UK versions instead because the US publisher fumbled. Fumbled so bad. Next we have These Infinite Threads which is the sequel to This Woven Kingdom by Tarana Mavi. 
And this is a Persian-based fantasy. Elise is a servant that everyone just passes over, but she's actually the heir to the Lost Long Jin Kingdom. And so she's always hunted, so she hides in plain sight until one day the crown prince kind of recognizes something within her. I mean, just like look at this cover. I just know that Toronto Mafia's writing would really suit a concept like this. And I'm mad at myself that I haven't read this yet, but it's the story for a lot of books that I own. But you know, whatever. One of my goals this year is to read through my physical TBR. And I already own this book, so yes, I also am obsessed with the color scheme and the color choices for these infinite threads. I just think that the design on this series is chef's kiss. We have Last Violin Call by Chloe Gong, which is two short stories that take place during Foul Lady Fortune, but also follow the characters of these violent delights. So uh, these violent delights are violent and are one duology, and then we have Foul Lady Fortune, and it's like a spin off duology, so they are connected in the same world. First, we have The Fox Love King by Hannah Wynn. Lore has the power to raise the dead and her death magic ties her to her city. To survive, she runs poisons, but when a run goes wrong, she's discovered for her powers. And thus, Lore is thrown into the glittering court of the Saint King, and she tangles in politics, religion, and forbidden romance. This just sounds like a very lush, romantic book, and I love like this like death magic. I think it's so fascinating, and it's pitched as an epic fantasy, so I'm very excited. I do want to read her first uh, duology for The Wolf and for the Throne as well. That's part of <laughs> getting, reducing my physical TBR. The Witch and the Vampire by Francesca Flores. This cover is beautiful and it's a queer Rapunzel retelling where a witch and a vampire who trust no one but themselves must journey through a dark forest together with danger at every turn. The two are each other's greatest threat but also their only hope to make it out of the forest alive. It just sounds so good. Flower Heart by Katherine Bakewell. I mean, this is one of my favorite covers of the year. It is so cottagecore. I love it, I'm obsessed with it. And the name Flower Heart? Clara's magic has always been wild, but never dangerous. Then a single touch causes poisonous flowers to bloom in her father's chest. And the only way to heal him is to cast a very complex spell, which requires perfect control. And the only one that can help her is her now distant childhood best friend, Xavier. Xavier names a terrible price in exchange for helping her father because he knows that she would do anything. But she discovers that the bargain is one of the heavy secrets that he's hiding and so she must get to the root of the dark magic spreading in the queendom and learns that her magic might be one of the only things that can stop it. I'm... I just... I love it. I love everything about it. I hope I love it when I read it because I'm obsessed with it already. The Adventures of Amina al-Sarafi by S.A. Chakrabordi. So S.A. Chakrabordi wrote the City of Brass trilogy, which I own and have yet to read common theme here, but however, <laughs> this is her new series, and this is going to be a new trilogy of magic and mayhem, and it's set on the seas. It's going to be pirates with forbidden artifacts and ancient mysteries, in which one woman determined to seize a final chance at glory. And what's interesting is that it seems like this book is centered around an older woman because Amina has already lived a very full life. Um, she's a mother, and so I don't know the exact age of the protagonist, but I do think that it's great that we are getting more books focused not just on people in their 20s, and so I will definitely be checking this one out. The Faithless by C.L. Clark, which is the sequel to The Unbroken. Lorraine is a soldier, and she was stolen as a child and raised to kill for the Empire, and her only loyalty is to her fellow conscripts. And now her company is sent back to her homeland to stop a rebellion. Luca needs a turncoat, and she needs someone who can sway the rebels towards peace, and she thinks that Terrain is the perfect person for this job, so that she can focus on what really matters, getting her uncle off the throne. And so the two haggle over the price of a nation. Now moving on to April, which is my birthday month. First up, we have Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross, who is one of my favorite authors. After centuries of sleep, the gods are warring again, and Iris's best chance to take care of her family is to win the promotion to become a columnist, at the Oath Gazette. She writes letters and slips them under her wardrobe where they disappear into the hands of Roman, who is her cold and handsome rival at the paper, and he starts to write her back. And so they find love through a magical connection, but they must face the depths of hell in a war among gods to seal their fate forever. Silver in the Bone by Alexandra Bracken. And this is a King Arthur retelling. Tamsin is a mortal with no magic, and she never wanted to be a howler, 
but that's what she has to do to keep her and her brother alive. Ten years later, there is rumor that somebody stole a ring from Arthurian legend and it could break a curse that is on her brother and so she sets out on an adventure to find this very ring. First Crowns by Catherine Doyle and Catherine Weber. I have the first book here, Twin Crowns. This is about two twin sisters that are both princesses. Ren has always known that one day she would steal her sister's place on the throne and Princess Rose like I don't think she knows that she has a twin and she basically like wakes up in the desert and is kidnapped and it has like princess bride vibes and that it's fantasy but also very rom com -y. so I've been really excited to read this one and I think the sequel is just going to be just as good and I love the covers for both of them. Untethered Sky by Fonda Lee. This is a novella and it's an epic fantasy fable about a woman that is seeking revenge at all costs after a manticore kills her family. So Fonda Lee is really known for the Jade War saga which is a really long book so it's interesting to see her like take on a different sort of format with a really short novella and I don't know if this is going to tie into like another series that she's publishing or if it's just like a one-off but it does seem very interesting. The Bone Shard War by Andrea Stewart is the third book in the Bone Shard Daughter series. Actually it's called the Drowning Empire series. In the Bone Shard Daughter, the first book, Emperor's reign has lasted for decades because his mastery of bone magic like creates these animal like figures that will maintain law and order but now his rule is failing and revolution is sweeping across the empire. Lynn is the emperor's daughter but her father refuses to acknowledge her as the heir to the throne. She vows to prove her worth by mastering the forbidden art of bone shard magic. This one sounds really cool and like I've never heard of a bone shard as a magical tool before and I've heard really great things about this series so definitely will be checking this out in the future. And lastly for April we have Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. So this was one of his Kickstarter projects um, and I'm not sure like 100% of the story behind that but basically it's a Cosmere standalone I guess. I'm not like a Brandon Sanderson expert that he like made a Kickstarter for so the people that got the Kickstarter like got it early um, but now it's going to be published regularly. So Tress leads a very simple life. She basically just like collects cups from sailors but then her best friend goes on a voyage and a disaster strikes and now Tress must stow away on a ship and seek a sorceress. So it sounds like a very like fun adventure story. I have not dove into the Cosmere yet. That is something I plan to do eventually but if you're a Brandon Sanderson fan I think you're definitely aware that this is coming out in April. Arguably one of my most anticipated releases for the year, we have A Crown of Ivy and Glass by Claire Legrand. Claire Legrand wrote the Imperium Trilogy, which is Theory of Born Kingsway and Lightbringer, aka one of my favorite series of all time, and she's back with another fantasy romance. It's being published under Sourcebooks Casablanca, so it is fully adult, no longer YA, and I, I'm just so excited. I love her books so much. And it says it's for fans of Bridgerton, and A Court of Thorns and Roses. So like that combination, yes. So Lady Gemma Ashbourne seemingly has it all. She's young, gorgeous, rich. Her family is anointed by the gods and blessed with abilities, but she's actually like really sad. Her sister was taken away years ago. Her mother abandoned the family and the rest of her family pretty much just forgets that she exists. And she's the only Ashbourne to not have powers. Um, instead, magic makes her sick, so she's like constantly ill. And she meets the devastatingly handsome Talon who has been seduced by a demon and his family destroyed themselves and he's the only one left. So intrigued and enchanted Gemma offers him a bargain. She will help him navigate high society if he helps her destroy the Basques and that will end the feud. Um yeah this just sounds absolutely amazing. Like I said I love this author so much. I love her. So excited, I can't believe I have this arc. Oh, I'm so happy and so excited. Next in May is Painted Devils by Margaret Owen, which is the sequel to Little Thieves, which it was supposed to be a duology. Now I think it's going to be a trilogy, and I love Margaret Owen. Um, this book is a retelling of Goose Girl. So Vanya Schmidt is the adopted goddess of death and fortune, and she was a servant of Princess Gazelle, but then basically she like casts a spell on the princess and takes her identity. So now Vanya leads a double life as like a princess and a jewel thief and the real princess is just like left penniless. Then however Vanya like unknowingly crosses the wrong god and is cursed that she's going to turn into jewels for her greed over the course of two weeks so now she has two weeks to break the curse. I mean it just sounds so fun and like just like Vanya is like a little chaos demon and 
I love Margaret Owen's writing, so I'm really excited for the second book in this trilogy to come out. Also out in May is Cherished by Tracy Wolf. This is a series that I think I'm going to want to dive into once all of the books are out. This is the sixth book, and it's basically like this girl Grace goes to a vampire academy, and that's like all I really know, and I know it just like has Twilight vibes, and I think I, I literally only want to keep my knowledge at that level because I think it will be really fun to go into that blind. I think I'm considering doing like a reading vlog for that series just because I think it would be so fun. So let me know if that's something you think I would like and if you would like to see it on my channel down below. I definitely will be planning it for later in the year along with maybe like a Twilight rereading vlog, maybe, we'll see. And now last we have June. We have Garden of the Curse by Katie Rose Poole who wrote there, there Will Come a Darkness. I really like that book. I need to continue on that trilogy, but I really like the first book. And it's a fantasy mystery duology. So curse breaker Marlo Briggs agrees to be in love with one of the most powerful nobles to gain entry into an illustrious and deadly society that holds clues to her mother's disappearance. I love a mix of like fantasy and mystery. I think that's so fun. That was done really well in Belladonna. And I, I love things that are very like genre bending. And so I definitely will be checking this one out. And the last book that I have to talk about today is Legends Legends and Liars by Morgan Rhodes. So she wrote the um, Fallen Kingdom series, which I read an audio a few years ago, loved them. And then the first book in the series is Echoes and Empires, and now this is the sequel. So in Echoes and Empires, a snarky 17-year-old must team up with an enigmatic criminal to cure herself of dangerous forbidden magic. I mean, I love like a good deadly magic fantasy and Morgan Rhodes, I feel like just has like a very classic YA fantasy style. So I definitely want to check this one out. And with that, that is the conclusion of my anticipated releases for the first half of 2023. Let me know which books you are most anticipating reading down below. I mean, there are so many that I want to check out and will definitely be buying like as soon as they release. So I'm so excited. And leave a little book stack emoji down below if you've made it this far in the video. So we you know, just to talk about all the anticipated releases that we have and have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.